Hey everybody and welcome back to Josh Leocha's video blog. Today we have special guest Rick Shear from Onto Mortgage talking about is there a housing bubble coming and what does it mean for you? Stay tuned, we'll be right back. All right, everybody, welcome back. As always, I like to have special guests on the show. And today we have one of our sponsors, one of a, a Leosh Properties Group's great friends, Rick Shear, president and CEO of Onto Mortgage, here today to shed some light on some of the misconceptions that may be out there in the marketplace. So Rick, thank you very much for being here. Hey man, thanks for having me. Always a pleasure to have you. So Rick, let's get right into it. I wanna talk about um, a lot of stuff that I keep hearing about or clients are asking about is, is there a housing bubble? And what's happening to rates and where are things going? So what I'd like to do is have you kind of just start off with, A, where are rates today? Where do you think they're heading? And why do you think it's important for people to either react to that or not react to that? Yeah, great question. So certainly last year, 2020, was when rates, mortgage rates hit kind of an all-time low. 30-year fix is somewhere in the mid-2% range. Um, now, as we've come you know, through, through the fall and, and winter, you know, that rate actually had creeped up and into 2021. That rate creeped up over 3%. Um, what we've actually seen is um, that mortgage rate come back under uh, 3% into the high 2% range. So, you know, we are seeing, you know, we did see some pullback and then now rates are starting to come back down. So, you know, I think no matter which way you look at it, uh, it's still a phenomenal time to do something on the mortgage level, either go in and purchase a home or be able to have mortgages, maybe another time to take a peek at refinancing. So where are rates going? You know, um, again, we're kind of right in the middle of coming back down. I don't feel that we'll see interest rates higher than you know three and a half percent over the next 12 to 24 months um and really being you know fluctuating between the high twos and the, and the low three percent so again at the end of the day um extremely extremely low interest rates yeah i mean that's uh, unheard of uh throughout the years that i've been doing this and when it got down to this level it was it was insanity um but i think what's probably the most surprising to me and i'm sure people who are going to watch this video is that um foreseeably there's going to be not much of a change and they're going to be kind of floating in that uh, upper twos to mid threes for the next 12 to 24 months you just said uh, yeah. so that obviously that's amazing yeah um, one, thing I'll just, one thing i'll just add to that real quick josh is sure. what's happening yeah. is, is the federal government is purchasing about 120 billion dollars of mortgage-backed securities mortgage rates uh keeping them artificially low so really what we want to start to do is keep our eye on the fed and find out, hey, when are those guys, when are they going to start tapering things back? Um, right now, I think they're kind of taping themselves on the court. They won't be doing it um, in the near future. But when they start to taper back that that buying up of mortgage backed securities, they're going to see mortgage rates go way down. And and what does your gut tell you? What does your sense tell you that uh, time frame wise? When do you think you'll see that happening? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Probably 12 to 24 months, uh, you'll start to see the economy come back. You know, we're, we're, we're consistently hearing things about um, government spending, right? Big, big spending bills. How do they pay for that? They pay for that through the treasury and, and, and bonds. So, um, you know, we have to kind of see how this shakes out and it will give us a better direction. But, you know, I don't see rates skyrocketing. Anymore, so. Okay, well, thank you for sharing that. Um, in regards to what you just said, in regards to rates, in regards to keep an eye on the Fed, um, talk to me about how the, all this ties into a housing bubble and in, in, in your opinion, I know I have mine, but in your opinion, someone who watches the market closely pays a very close attention to the economic happenings of, of all of the things around us, plus specifically in the real estate market. What's your opinion and what is your gut telling you in regards to where things are heading in regards to a bubble or not a bubble? Yeah. So, you know, I think a lot of people, a lot of the talking heads on, on some of the, the different shows that we all watch, financial and otherwise, are talking about this housing bubble because, as you know, uh, doom and gloom uh, sells, right? And so, and we're also coming off of, you know, a lot of us in this industry have, were around in 2007, 8, 9, 10, where you did see horrific things happen to the housing, the housing market, right? huge pullbacks, not so much in New England. We had our fair share of issues, right? But certainly uh, not as dramatic as other places in the United States. 
Um, and one of the major causes of that housing bubble was the fact that uh, they were propped up by, by uh, horrible loans, right? Horrible um, people getting into properties that they shouldn't have been getting into based on what they thought was gonna happen in the future at that type of thing. What I'll tell you is today, uh, people getting into homes are getting into homes with great credit. Uh, they're getting into homes that they can afford, fits in their debt to income ratio. So this isn't, this housing bubble is not predicated on giving loans or, or, or giving things to people who can't afford them. Um, what we have right now, and the reason why you're seeing rates and property appreciate as much as they are is the supply and demand issue. Supply and demand also brought on by COVID, right? COVID saying, you can only live once. So we, let's go buy that house on the Cape or, you know, on Nantucket or, and we, you know, I can work from anywhere. So let's get out of the city and move to the suburbs or you're seeing a, a bunch of shifting happen. And what we often see in the housing, in the housing upturn where there's a lot of market appreciation, um, we see that uh, people would love to sell their home because they can get top dollar, but where are they going to go, right? And that's really what's, 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 um, what's causing a, um, an issue with, with, with inventory. So um, I don't see a housing bubble anytime soon because we can't fix this supply and demand issue for quite a while. Again, up in the Northeast here in Boston, you know, they can, we can't make any more land, right? We can't keep going up. There's an ocean there. Right. Until we figure that piece out, we can't go any farther out uh, and we can't go up. And so, you know, it's really uh, coming down to making sure we get the housing that people need. Um, so, you know, do I think there's going to be a downturn? No. Do I think there's going to be a slowdown? Absolutely. Um, so. Yeah, very interesting. I think the video I posted uh, a couple weeks ago uh, talked about the same thing, in my opinion of it. And while I don't claim to be the smartest guy, uh, living through 07, uh, you know, being, being in the business for 21 years, uh, you've seen some things, I've seen some things, um, and you do understand that this this market is completely different from the downturn of 07, of, you know, that whole, how it happened and what happened. And like you said, it goes basic back to supply and demand. And when there's no inventory and, and no real change coming in regards to new startups and, and new construction and things like that, Gonna be very hard to fill that void and fill that need so um that's going to continue to keep i think pressure on the market rising rates and like i do think it, that'll start to open up a little bit as we get into the the spring and summer months here and hopefully have a little bit of downward pressure on slowing down the price jumps but rates being where they are and that inventory issue is is basically not seeing a housing bubble happening because of that we're just going to see probably continued rise in values over time so I think the bottom line, and you you tell me if I'm wrong, I think buyers who are in the market who are thinking about waiting, even though it's very difficult right now and super competitive, I think they need to kind of stay in the market and try to go out there and, and find that home because I think that values aren't changing anytime soon. Yeah, no, I think if people are sitting on the sidelines because they, they think rates are gonna be coming in lower or they think that the appreciation is gonna slow down a little bit more, uh, I, I really think that they should re rethink it, relook at it. Um, really what I'm telling everybody I talk to is um, get pre-approved, get your ducks in a row, make sure that when that perfect house comes on the market, that you're ready to act on. And, you know, listen, if you've got to go and rent month to month until that time happens, that's fine. But I'll tell you that chances are a year from today, mortgage rates will be higher and properties will be more expensive. Yep. Right? So if your alternative is, to go in and, and rent for two thousand dollars a month, you know, and, and wait for next year, you know, again, I, I would really have you rethink that. At least get all of your ducks in a row, get your credit, you know, get all of those things done, and then get out there. And then if you, when you find that house, you can jump on it and, and get it done because people are getting their offices accepted. You know, it, you know, we got we have three today, so you know it is happening. It's just a little bit. You we gotta. You know, you got to have a team like Josh Leoch's team behind you because we call it, you got to be the prettiest peacock, right? In, in, in the room, you got to have everything. You got to have your, from the pre-approval to your letter that you're giving them to me calling the listing agent saying, hey, the Johnsons are the best people we have in our pipeline. You're not going to, like you have all stops. But because of that, because of that teamwork, we're getting offers accepted. So, you know, don't, uh, if, you, if you've been rejected a bunch of times, there's faith, you you know, there's, uh, you know, keep, keep at it and, uh, and, and things, will, uh, things will start to happen. 
Well, Rick, as always, uh, a ton of information and a ton of good um, data for people to kind of understand, or hopefully they understand, but to swallow, digest, and think about in the marketplace. You're a wealth of knowledge for us and certainly for all the consumers out there. So thank you again. Big shout out to Rick Scher, President and CEO of Onto Mortgage for joining us today. And uh, we'll be back in another week with more videos. We're gonna be right back a couple more times because there's a lot more we can get into in regards to uh, the reasoning and where the market's heading and make sure that you understand exactly what you're doing if you're out there looking to buy your first home or move up. So thank you again for watching Josh Leoch's video blog. Have a great day and we'll see you soon.